today we will be talking about the exhausted CD8 positive T cells. Now these CD8 positive T cells are exhausted and they can't perform their own function. We would be trying to understand what is T cell exhaustion really means and why that is important in context of cancer. So exhausted T cells or CD8 positive T cells is a state of specific CD8 positive cells. They literally mean that these cells cannot function their uh, uh, job optimally. So in this video, we would talk about what are CD8 positive exhausted T cell, when T exhausted cells are generated, subtypes of T exhausted cells, why T exhausted cells are important in context of cancer. And then we are talking about how one can reactivate them to work again. So all these things would be covered in this video. So these CD8 positive T cells are exhausted and they have certain molecular marker on their surface which is unique signature. Especially they have high levels of PD-1, CTLA-4, uh, TGIT, etc. So all of these are kind of like inhibitory modulators of the T cell activity. Exhausted T cell also express specific nuclear transcription factor. A combination of these is basically determine their particular physiological state. For example, TS, uh, TCF negative, EOMS or TBR2 high, TBET low. This is a hallmark molecular signature of an exhausted T cell. So their proliferative capacity is low and uh, their cytokine secretion capacity is also low because the main job of these T cells are either to destroy the pathogen or tumor cells or secret cytokines. So if all of these aspects are kind of like compromised, then they are exhausted. Anyway, they are not functionally optimum. So this is how the T cell response look like. You can see this is the antigen exposure in blue and the T cell response is kind of mirroring that and a little bit offset from that aspect. Now during uh, this is a naive T cell, then eventually at the peak of infection, T effector cells are produced and literally when the infection is gone, then some of them would be remaining as T memory. So what happens is when the antigen exposure is long term, instead of a short brief exposure of antigen, when the antigen exposure is long term, then the T cell alters its state. It does not go to a, so it did mature to an effective effector state, eventually it moves to these exhausted T cell state that you can see. And at exhausted T cell state, they are non-functional and they are literally exhausted. They don't perform properly. So let's try to understand the biology behind that. So imagine this is a CD8 positive T cell. It, its job is to kill the tumor cells. But the tumor is not static. So tumor grows and divide rapidly. And so after a point of time, the CD8 positive T cells cannot match up. And eventually they try to fight back, but eventually they are also tired. How many cells they could kill? Because the cells are growing very rapidly, much, uh, uh, much compared to their uh, killing rate. So obviously, they get exhausted. And this is actually not a different cell type. It's a state of a cell. Like sometimes you feel frustrated and exhausted. Similarly, T cell exhaustion is a state, it's a molecular state, it's a stage of T cells life that some of these cells undergoes who are acting in the front line to fight cancer. Anyway, CD8 positive T cell exhaustion leads to hypofunctional T cell state and it's basically, uh, it, it leads to basically decreased efficiency of the immune checkpoint inhibitor. So basically, there are specific immune checkpoint inhibitors which are abrogated in these conditions. And basically it's a major uh, obstacle in terms of uh, adaptive T cell therapies. Sometimes T cell therapies are getting more popular to fight cancer. And these kind of situations are very difficult in that context. This transient state is good for T cells because it prevents them from death. Like if they are too much exhausted, they would eventually die or undergo apoptosis. So it's kind of like a state of neutrality, good for them, bad for the human being or the body. Anyway, all, so what we have to remember, this, this kind of state is achieved due to prolonged and overstimulation of the effector T cell. Option one is to die, but another option, it's basically survive but be non-functional. 
So there are several kind of signaling and regulatory mechanism which lead to the production of these kind of transient states. So one of that is basically PD-1 and PD-1 ligand mediated signaling. We are talking about these signalings because once we understand that, we can prevent these kind of signaling and re rescue these cells from achieving a affected T cell state or we can revive them. There could be CTLA-4, B7.1 or 7.2 mediated signaling. There could be basically um, TIM-3 mediated signaling. So there could be TIM-3, BAT, etc., which lead to a, a kind of like inhibition of the T cells. There could be also mixed inhibition where there are like uh, several uh, in inhibitory and activatory signal together which ultimately, but, but the inhibitory signals are so strong by the inhibitory receptors, it overdrives the activatory signal. But anyway, so all these are possible signaling regime by, by which the T cell exhaustive state can be achieved. So obviously, many of these can be targeted using antibodies, like monoclonal antibodies. So let's see the different fate of the T cells. So the naive T cells give rise to different kind of T cells like effector T cells, memory T cells, etc. And when overstimulated, they ultimately give rise to this kind of uh, exhausted T cells. Now, recent studies have shown that there are specific transcriptomic signature which allow us to differentiate them from other T cells. They look broadly similar. And people found that there are specific marker which help us to understand which of them are basically um, a signature of these a cell. For example, you can see in this uh, single cell RNA sequencing data that there are several clusters and each of these clusters are kind of uh, basically determined by transcriptional similarity. For example, these red cells have similar transcriptome compared to the violet cells. The violet cells and red cells have different transcriptome. Anyway, one can see here, in this is like a Google map, so you can see the territory is defined by this color. In this case, these are the effector-like cells and here these are the terminally exhausted cells. These are proliferating cells. So one can see that the terminally exhausted cells that are brown is marked by high level of like PD-1 and kind of like a uniformly high level of tox. So this is how one can understand uh, which, which, which are the markers at that state. One can also see TCF7 or TCF1 is very high at cluster 4, which is the progenitors of the exhausted T cells. So all these things tells us there are unique molecular signature which would help us to understand the T cell state altogether. And you can see there is a trajectory of these kind of situation. Like there is basically um, exhausted progenitors, stage one, stage two, and it all happens through a molecular consensus. It's kind of like a te temporal dynamics of several molecules which dictate these altered fate. It's like you are sometimes little bit exhausted, more exhausted and extremely exhausted. So these T cells have the similar kind of scenarios. Anyway, um, there are three signal model which, uh, which can explain the T cell exhaustion. One is basically persistent antigen presentation, which we learned so far. It can, it can come from like a, a proliferative tumor cells, etc. It could be also due to other situations like uh, interferon, beta and gamma mediated signaling. So it's kind of like a chronic inflammation, which lead to this kind of ex exhaustion. Imagine a repetitive viral infection that is also a chronic viral in, uh, uh, antigen exposure, right? Anyway, there could be also negative co-stimulation mediated signaling, for example, repetitive PDL1 and PD mediated signaling. And some of these inhibitory molecules that can inhibit T cells normal function can be expressed by these tumor cells. So they are really rogue. A, they divide too much. They outcompete the T cell division rate. B, they, are, they secrete molecules which work like a suppressor of T cell activity. This is how they make the T cell sort of like exhausted and grow themselves. So this is how cancer can spread and prevent T cells activation. Anyway, reactivation of the exhausted T cell is something which, which scientists are very interested in. So one of the way is to basically, um, so in the exhaustive state, they, these T cells cannot uh, secrete cytokine, right? So obviously, one of the way to target these exhaustion is to target these inhibitory receptors. So let's say you can have 
if you can block the PD1 and PDL1 interaction, this might have a lot of benefit. So this kind of recurrent theme is really important for cancer immunotherapy because you have like these kind of monoclonal antibodies which can block several aspects of signaling and can revive these T cells, probably help them to fight better in terms of cancer. Anyway, if you like this video, this was a different flavor video. If you like this video, give it a quick thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.